Here at Dangerous Minds, we're going to look into the Chris Watt psyche and try to work out what may or may not have been going on with him and why he acted the way he did. It's an interesting case because the Police have done what they've called a data dump and they've put all this information around that we can scour through, including an, um, an initial 1960-page investigative data dump that in, even includes people's names and addresses, which I don't think they'd be happy about, but nonetheless, it's out there. The rest of the information is great for people who want to look through and find out exactly what went on in this horrendous case that took place in 2018. Now, what happened was Shanann was trying to grow a multi-level marketing business. I take my hat off to Shanann because she seemed to be doing it very well. She had herself a nice Lexus car that was in the garage and she had two little kids, she had a super tight schedule that she was keeping to to juggle everything and keep all the balls that she had going up in the air and she had another child on the way because she was 15 weeks pregnant and she had a few financial issues which she was trying to uh, get on top of because she her income from her multi-level marketing business was actually thriving, which was the product she was selling. And they, she was digging the family out of this financial crisis that they had uh, got themselves into. But she had a goal, she had a mission, and she was going to achieve it. So she was a tenacious woman who had a strong mindset and she needed the support of her husband in order to accomplish everything she was trying to do. However, unbeknownst to Shanann, lurking behind the scenes was a mistress. And suddenly, in a matter of weeks, Chris turned from a devoted husband and father who helped around the house, did a lot of housework, it seems, did a lot for the children, got ready their um, favourite blankies and other uh, medicines and all sorts of things ready for their day before Shanann even got up. And this is before he went to work at about four o'clock in the morning. He was that devoted. Um, he hardly ever went out with his mates. He just was a completely devoted father who loved his kids and did everything for his family and everything that he could to help Shanann. He really was an incredibly supportive husband and I don't want to use these words in a negative way but Shanann definitely took advantage of the fact that he was so um, helpful and compliant to her wishes. He was probably that way because he could see she was doing really well and he needed she needed his support but I think he also was um, a uh, happy to be a submissive type. His mother appears to be quite a dominant sort of person who uh, didn't really like the fact that Shanann had, you know, taken him away as many mothers feel when their sons uh, meet somebody, particularly somebody who is strong-willed and driven and Shanann was definitely those two things that that's obvious because you've got to be driven to have uh, built a downline of multi-level marketing that you're building yourself cold selling to people to build your network as Shanann had done so the the two women cra clashed the mother and um, the wife and this was probably also another problem that Poor old Chris was facing because he had the mistress who he wanted to be with he uh, and he didn't want to be with his family right now. He wanted to be with her. He was in the honeymoon stage. He was, She was doing everything to reel him in and keep him close and keep him hooked. She was looking up sexual practices so as she would um, 
get her claws into him deeper and wrap her legs around him and uh, and keep him close to the yes, you know what. And she was obviously one of those wicked, wicked woman Medusa types who was snaking every bit out of him. She wanted the attention. She needed the attention. She was somebody who liked the attention. She um, liked the men's attention at work. His co-workers had come and said she was well aware that they looked at her and thought she had a good body and Um, Chris would not say anything when they discussed, oh, look, hasn't Nicole got a good body and yada. A different Nicole than Nicole Atkinson. Uh, There's so many Nicoles and Nickies and uh, and Nicks in this that it's it's mind-blowing. But do not get confused between Nicole Atkinson and Nicole Kessinger. Kessinger, 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 Nicole Kessinger is the mistress. Nicole Atkinson is the... Very good friend who allowed this to come to a head so quickly because of her tenacity and her belief in her friend and also in her own intuition of what her friend would and would not do. That friend being Shanann, Chris's wife. Now, what happened was Shanann was working very hard to try and keep this marriage together. She knew that Chris had pulled away from her and in her mind she knew that he had a mistress even though it was out of character and she wouldn't have thought that he would have gone off because he had no game as um, I've learned a new term in this. It means that the, he's not a player. He doesn't have a ha, have a. Wh- wh- he's not one of those men that can go out and just worm his way into a woman's bed at random and I think this is why initially Shanann didn't really want to believe that he was having an affair but I think it got to a point where it became even to her undeniable that he was having an affair because he had withdrawn because he was spending extra money that um He shouldn't have been – he wouldn't kiss her. He wouldn't have sex with her when they were having sex like rabbits um, only uh, only weeks before. And it all came to a head. Now, we will do a background and we will understand how all of this fits together and what possibly, probably, more than likely – led to the very, very, very sad deaths of a little beautiful three-year-old girl and a little beautiful four-year-old girl who, by all accounts, Chris was totally in love with and devoted to and cared about so much. Now, how anybody could choose some manipulating woman over these beautiful, innocent children, uh, I and a lot of others will never get their head around. But I do believe that this happened because of the mistress and because of the type of person she was. Now, I do not necessarily think she said to him, Go and kill your family. No, I do not believe that. I, I, uh, well, she might have, but I, I personally, I don't think she did. I think what happened was she was very possessive. She wanted to be the person in his life. She didn't like the fact that he had the kids. She wanted to say she did. She wanted to accept them but she in her heart of hearts she couldn't she she couldn't accept them she didn't want them she wanted to be the focus of his attention she certainly didn't like the wife there's no doubt about that um she didn't she could barely even bring uh, in the interviews that we see from the police she could barely even bring herself to mention Shanann's name I mean it's crazy and um she doesn't really have any true empathy for the for what happened she's just only 
worried about her. And I think that's a, a, an insight into the mistress's personality. And I think what happened, it, it, there was a whole bunch of things that came together that made Chris not snap. I don't think it was snap as as in a, a vile rage. I think it was a snap because there was just too much mounting up around him. There was he couldn't get out. He couldn't swim. He didn't know how to get out. And for some unknown reason, he thought the way out was to kill his family, so he could just start afresh with this new woman, and. Everybody would be, oh, poor Chris, poor Chris, um, she's run away. We don't know what happened to her. She must have been kidnapped. Oh, it's so terrible you lost your family. I guess there, he thought that there was going to be a time for that he was going to live um, by himself and then eventually Nikki would move in and it, that, they would all live a happy life and his family would, he, would be gone and... Uh, and that would be that he would start afresh because he was drowning in the old life and he so wanted this new life and his mother didn't like um, Shanann. He had all that drama going on as well and I think that's what happened. He just made the wrong choice and it was a crazy, crazy, crazy choice and whether it had anything to do with the amount of caffeine he was getting into his body from Thrive or not, I don't know. Funnily enough, Nicole does allude to that when she talks to the police and that's one thing that I am on her side about. I'm thinking, yeah, did it make him so hyper that he wasn't sleeping properly and we know when you're not sleeping properly that you – I mean, even if it wasn't hyper, just that it was affecting his sleep. If he's not sleeping properly, lack of sleep can make you make really strange decisions and start thinking really strangely and, and, and prioritizing things in your mind in a really crazy mixed up way. I mean, I know I've done it. I've, I've, uh, I didn't sleep for about five or six days or barely um, one time when I was in Africa and um, by the end of it, I was almost seeing things. I, I was, I was seeing things in the jungle. I was seeing uh, lions that weren't there at night. I was um, started to think all these crazy thoughts, and finally, I realized that this is because I'm not sleeping. I'm not thinking properly, and. So I ended up going and spending a little extra money that I didn't want to and um, making a trip to somewhere that I could sleep um, to readjust my mind. And then I went back to where I had been So and, and everything settled down. So I know that lack of sleep um, can definitely change your way or, and mode of thinking in, in ways you wouldn't even expect. And you start thinking things are real that aren't real and, and start, um, prioritizing things in your mind that you know aren't wrong. And if you don't, um, consciously realize that's going on and, and you go with it, um, you can get, you could get sucked into all sorts of different ways of, of, of thinking that you, you wouldn't normally think. And there is a possibility that that did happen in Chris's case, but there's also the possibility that he's just a coward and this was the, the coward's way out. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at what happens from the time Nicole comes in and tells the world that her friend is gone? And we're going to go back and look at everything unfold. And that will happen in part two. So stay tuned, folks. We'll get back.